Um, round four, our most AD pleasing. God, I love that. Our most AD please pleasing me, please me. players. Say that you'll please me. Are uh, the uh, the Rams boys, Cooper Cup and Bobby Trees, Robert Woods. Um, currently both being drafted back to back as the last two picks of the fourth round. Guys currently going ahead of them are Mark Andrews at tight end. I mean, or like Calvin, if you want to say at, at receiver, receivers being drafted ahead of both of them are like Calvin Ridley. No, thanks. Um, Tyler Lockett. No, thanks. Like extreme value for, I think guys that are going to have like sh- probably f- end up as fringe wide receiver ones, if not wide receiver ones. Yep. Yeah. Um, we, we, right. We have them ranked wide receiver, 12 wide receiver, 13 um, going, going in round four. Uh, so, you know, to your point, if you're starting running back, running back early or running back wide receiver, running back or whatever, like you can wait on the, on the wide receivers. Cause they're all hanging out here. There's so much wide receiver value in these rounds. Um, I don't know. We, there's not really a whole lot of running back value here. I mean, maybe our, our one running back who we think is really going to outperform his current ADP in this round is David Johnson currently going at 40th overall. Um, if he stays healthy. Yeah, 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 right. I mean, if he's healthy and a three down back, he will finish higher than the 40th overall player. Like that is, that's, I think, a foregone conclusion. Um, it's just, is he healthy and will he stay healthy? The guy looks like he's incredible shape, um, which is encouraging and I'm hopeful. Um, and if you do end up drafting him there, he would be a huge value if that is the case. It is best shape of their life season with training camp, uh, now in session where all these guys are coming in the best shape of their lives. So you can go ahead and mark that one down in, in pen. Um, yeah. just, j- just some things that I'd like to highlight from a not so pleasing perspective. Um, first of all, this, this is just absurd. Deshaun Watson is going 37th, um, which yeah. is d- disgusting. Don't do that. Um, Russell Wilson's going 44. Um, you can keep that one too. I mean, he's really good, but you don't need to be taking, um, you know, quarterbacks three and four in the fourth round you can you can wait um or yeah Dak Prescott's already gone too I think right so I I just don't like any any value going in here from a from a a quarterback perspective and then Mark Andrews at 41 um we have him ranked at 67 um like we both like Mark Andrews quite a bit but um yeah, it just seems seems early. And, you know, Zach Ertz went in round three. On Sleeper, you got Zach Ertz in round five. So, you know, people pull the the trigger on tight ends randomly, honestly. Um, if if they've got two running backs and a wide receiver through the first three rounds, like they'll be like, Oh, who's the best tight end available? And I think that's might might be what's happening uh with Mark Andrews going this early. Yeah, I feel like invariably what happens generally like with tight ends, if I mean, you kind of have to get Ertz traditionally the last few years in the first half of the second round. So like, you know, 15, 20 picks are going to or more are going to go by before you get, Ertz, you know, the chance to draft him in the third. And so Ertz is gone usually. Um, but generally, like, yeah, like what you're saying with tight ends, you know, or people I feel like it's always like the four picks near the turn end up with the premium tight ends because they're like, they see three to four like receivers that they're okay with. Like, I'll just take a tight end now. And then I know one of those guys will be there waiting for me or that, you know, the ADP game. So, yep. You win, you uh, lose. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Calvin Ridley at all going in, in the, the end of the fourth round uh, before Cooper cup and before Robert Woods? Yeah. uh, I mean, he has the potential to finish there, but I mean, a lot of things have to go the same way for him as happened last year and his health has to be more consistent. I mean, he was put on IR to finish the season. Um, 
but he's a second year receiver. He had several amazing games after they traded most of new outscored Julio in a majority of those games. Um, it's just a matter of, I mean, a different coordinator. Yes, it is Dirk Cutter, who they were extremely successful with before. I mean, however, there's just so many more unknowns, I guess. And in the first four rounds, I'm really trying to mitigate risk. And I would much rather have the built in targets and yards for Robert Woods than the uh, potential for Calvin Ridley to finish higher than them. And so, again, I'm really trying to mitigate risk in those first four rounds. So give me all of the Cooper Cup and Robert Woods action. And until Calvin Ridley does it and stays healthy. okay. like they didn't have a running game or any running backs last season. They had what was it? If you go back to our uh, our bounce back and breakout podcast, you can hear me talk about Todd Kurt, Todd Gurley being a potential uh, comeback player of the year. And then I think we even made it like its own freestanding highlight video on YouTube as well. Um, So we talk about like how devastated the Atlanta Falcons were by injury. And then not only that, but then you like, so assuming health, especially along the offensive line. And then you also add a real running back in Todd Gurley. Like the guy handled a workload that was comparable, like a decent size. It was like 225 some odd carries, 220 some odd carries last season, which is a a decent workload. And he didn't have any health issues. They just limited his touches early in the season. And so if you have a, a comparable running game and a defense that isn't marred with injuries, you're theoretically like ahead in games or potentially trying to close them out instead of being down every game because you can't run the ball you're one dimensional and your defense like half of them are on ir so you throw the ball 686 times last year and it's not a mystery that your second receiver on your team finishes where he did and they were still so disappointed with the team that they fired the oc like i'm just saying there were a lot of interesting circumstances surrounding why calvin ridley finished where he did and i don't want to try and hope that Ridley has a similar season when I know Robert Woods and Cooper cup are going to do what they're going to do. Like I it's that he shouldn't be there is, you know, it's just, I'll never take it. I I won't take him. I think he's going to have a great season and has the potential to finish as a top, you know, a top, uh, what a a wide receiver two or better. And I don't doubt that he'll have wide receiver one weeks, but man, I'm not taking him ahead of those guys. Nope. Yeah. 93 targets last year. Um, just no, no thanks. The you Godwin know, hype, man. That's what it is, right? Everybody saw what Godwin did when he was hyped up last season. He came through and now it's like Ridley's the guy. Ridley's the guy. It's like, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Julio's still there and his 157 targets and 1400 yards. And yeah. Yeah. So Averaging just no thanks. F- yeah. Uh, no, no way. Top right. two. You, yeah, uh, no. And, and you've Listen always to the last talked podcast. to you want to draft players that can exceed their position, not drafting them at their, at a potentially, um, ceiling spot. Um, yeah, right. You know, so like Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the third round a couple, a couple weeks ago before Damian Williams went out was, Hey, this is great value. You could do a lot better than that. Clyde Edwards Hilaire at the end of the first round is like, ah, I mean, I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm still taking Josh Jacobs probably ahead of him, but I mean, I don't yep. know. That's that's close. That's to me, that's really close. The Josh Jacobs, and Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire conversation is, and you could probably throw Drake in. Like those four guys, I'm yep. going to be ecstatic if I get any of them. Um. Uh, and then yeah, I mean, really, I mean, our quarterbacks in that round are the lowest value because it, our quarterbacks are pretty much like if there's a quarterback going in any of these rounds, he's invariably among our like uh worst value because at that point it's like if you don't get to me the the philosophy is the same for tight end and quarterback which is like if you don't get one of the top two or three guys then you might as well wait till double digit rounds to get whoever you're going to get like 
Yeah, and I will say, so I misspoke earlier when I when I thought Dak already went because I, I can't believe that Deshaun Watson is going well, a full round and a half before Dak Prescott. Yeah, um, Dak's going 53rd overall. He's going in the middle of the fifth round and he was last year's, what, quarterback two? Quarterback two. And he's going yeah, in the fifth. That, that might be... Like if, right, yeah. if, if if there's quarterback value, I think it's that one. But at the same time, like from our consensus, like we have Dak r- r- ranked at 54 overall and he's going 53rd. Like there's yeah. not that much perceived value um, in that spot just from the way we have him ranked. But he's going quarterback five uh, and we have him ranked at quarterback three. Yeah. Yeah. Th- that says a lot, though, if our quarterback three is currently being drafted in ESPN, like where that where the world was, thinks. Yeah, he's quarterback going quarterback go at, six at quarterback because, six. yeah, Deshaun Watson, uh, Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray are all going before Dak. And then obviously Mahomes and, and Lamar early. So, yeah, yeah quarterback so, six. Yeah, Crazy. And it, he's going to I don't think that there's a there, I, there would have to be something catastrophic for him to finish that low in a Mike McCarthy system. I agree. Especially By with the that way, schedule. I, I saw a picture of Drew Brees at training camp today and he looked old. Yeah. Well, he is. Yeah. Just yeah, just a heads up for Michael Thomas people uh drafting him. Um Drew Brees just he looked he looked really old. That's all I'm <laughs> gonna say. <laughs>